editor of Sewing World magazine and contributor to the ISO website. Today we're going to have a look at getting started. Sewing with a machine nowadays is a breeze. They're made to make things simpler. We're going to have a look at the basic machines and what you can do with them. So let's get started. Today's modern machines make professional results easy to achieve, no matter what your skill level. You can get lovely neat seams. You can insert zips very easily and quickly. You can do decorative buttonholes or ordinary buttonholes. And you can make sure you get the right size again and again because it's all automated. You can do decorative stitching as a finishing touch. There's so much to choose from. And even the most basic machines have lots of stitch choices. And it's so easy to choose which stitch you want. The machines are also computerised, which is a real boon. Because not only can you have all these choices for you, they actually set the tension, they set the stitch length and width. You can override it if you want to, but it's all set there if you prefer to let the machine do it for you. So with an LCD display screen, you've got lots of information there right in front of your very eyes. You've got your stitch choice. Here I've got stitch one, but I can easily change that to have something different. Just by turning my dial here, it's changing my stitch. Here I've got a grid showing me all the stitches I can choose on this particular model. It shows what presser foot to use. I've also, I know that I'm going to be stitching with one needle. I could choose to be a twin needle. I can see my stitch length and I can alter this. I can also alter the stitch width. Now there's a maximum it'll go up to and a minimum it'll go down to. So again, I can't get it that wrong. The other beautiful thing is because it automatically sets it unless you override it, it's really difficult to get the wrong tension. The other thing to look at with the sewing machines is the fact that they are basically all the same, no matter what brand or what price bracket. The threading is the same, or very, very similar, and it normally has guides on how to do it, so you really can't get it that wrong. For instance, you have a thread spindle. Let me just take this off so it's clearer. Now sometimes the spindle will be upright and sometimes, like this one, it's laid down. What you do need to make sure you do is put on a thread retainer. These come in this size or even smaller. Now this will stop the thread bouncing up and down as you sew. If it does bounce up and down as you sew, the thread won't go evenly, you'll get skipped or broken stitches. So you just pop that on. The next thing to do is to thread it through the thread path, as it's telling you to. But do make sure that when you're threading it through that the presser foot is up and that the needle is in the highest position, which you can tell because you can see the little lever there. So I'm literally following the guide and then with this one I'm ready to use my needle threader to thread the needle. If you do want to alter the tension at the top, this is the top thread tension, you can do so. As you can see, the average or the normal tension is marked in some way. Here it's got lines between them. If I went beyond that, you can see there are no lines linking the numbers up, so you've got a much looser tension. So I'll go back to where it was, and that's nicely set for most types of sewing. Nowadays, most machines, you can actually thread the bobbin at the same time as having the machine still threaded, so you don't actually have to interrupt everything. And of course, it's, again, it's easy to do because you've got guides on how to wind the thread onto the bobbin. A word about bobbins. It's a good idea to make sure that you buy bobbins that suit the brand and machine you've got. They look very similar, but sometimes they actually won't fit very well or they'll be a bit loose and then stitching won't be nice and neat and even. Another thing on all machines is the flywheel or the balance wheel. Now you use this to raise and lower the needle. And if you need to stitch really, really intricate little bits, one or two stitches, you can do so by turning this towards you. So it literally lowers the needle and raising it, taking one stitch at a time each time you turn the balance wheel. Now a word about needles, flat to back, back of the machine. Do check your manual though, but that's the general use and then tighten it up. You put it into the hole that's there, the needle holder, tighten the screw by hand and then finish off tightening it up with the screwdriver supplied. And this will make sure the needle will not work loose as you're stitching. 
The other thing which is so great with modern machines are the presser feet. So many of them are clip-on. You just push a button on the back to release it, to put the foot back on again. You position it under the foot holder, drop it down, and there it is. It's literally clipped on to the bar. Now all machines will come with a variety of feet, depending on the machine, the make and the model as to how many feet. You'll nearly always get a zipper foot. And as you can see with this one, you can get the needle right down in here, very, very close to the zip teeth. Feed dogs are another thing you'll hear of that are here. And they actually help feed the fabric through as you stitch. As you can see, they go down, forward, up and back each time you take a stitch. And that will help feed the fabric through evenly. Having wound the bobbin, we're ready to put it in. Now on this machine, we've got a drop-in bobbin, and many of the modern machines have liked this. And they also have a nice clear cover, so you can actually see how much thread is on the bobbin, so you can see when you're about to run out. You literally drop it in, hence its name, drop-in. And again, follow the guide that's on the machine with threading. And that's all you have to do, you just lay the thread round, put the case back on, and that bobbin is now ready to sew. This is the throat plate. I'll take the foot off again so you can see. that This is the feed dogs, as we saw earlier. Also on this throat plate, you have markings. So you can actually stitch a quarter inch seam, a five eighth seam, two millimeters, sorry, two centimeters, etc. Another term you're going to hear a lot of is flatbed and free arm. This is the flatbed. It's the flat area that you place the fabric on and stitch with. Having a nice big area means that the fabric will stay nice and steady as you stitch. But sometimes you might want to stitch on little pieces like cuffs. So you take off one section and now you've got free arm. So this is really useful if you want to stitch in the round. Now part of the toolkit that you'll get with the machine is a little brush. And then this is really good for cleaning out the bobbin area. So you literally take the bobbin out and give it a bit of a de-fluff because fluff will build up and obviously the more fluffier fabric that you use, something like fleece or wool, will get very, very fluffy. I haven't done a lot of that on this yet so there's not a lot of fluff. But if you don't do this you'll find the needle might get stuck when it goes down or the stitches might tangle up. So we've looked at this lovely stitch selection we've got here but if I change the length and the width. I can also alter the way the stitch looks. This is a simple zigzag stitch. And this is the auto choice of length and width. Now I'm going to change. Now when I change, you must remember that you need to have the needle in the up position. So I'm now going to change the stitch length. So now the stitches are wider as well as being spaced out. So I can actually go the complete opposite way and make the gap between the stitches as small as possible and make the stitch width quite small too. So there we have a very simple zigzag stitch. That's the way the machine would do it automatically. Here I've changed the length so that the zigzags are much wider spaced. Then I change the width so they're bigger. Then I decreased both so it's really tiny, so you've got like a little tiny stitch. And as I kept changing, and here I've got the stitches really close together, which is great if you're doing a plique, because you can cover the raw edges with that and the, the raw edges will be neatly covered and they won't ravel. So now you should be ready to sew with confidence. But if you do have problems, and of course they can occur, remember to go through the basics. Defluff the bobbin. It's always important to get out that fluff because that can actually jam up the machine and cause bulky stitching. If the thread isn't on the spindle properly, if it isn't retained with your retainer and it bounces backward and forwards, it can get tangled. It can pull tight, which can skip stitches, break stitches or indeed break the needle because it's pulled so tight. And talking of needles, make sure you haven't got a blunt needle. Blunt needles can cause broken stitches too. You need to change it every garment or every six to eight hours of sewing. 
The other thing to be careful of, when you start sewing, in order you don't get a horrible jumble or bird's nest as it's known at the back, hold on to the two threads as you start sewing so that they're nicely anchored and they don't get pulled down into that feed dogs. And of course if you want more sewing tips or hints you can always go to the website www.iso.co.uk So from me Wendy Gardner, happy sewing!